It's been six years since I first booted Blender and fell in love with 3D. It all started pushing around vertices, trying to make art which no one saw, to where I am now working as a full-time 3D creator. In this video, I'll be sharing my experience over these six years going over what I did to get to where I am today. Things like what mistakes I made in the early days, what I'd do differently if I could do it again, plus most importantly what I did right that got me to where I am now. And believe me, there's a lot. So for year one, I set out to learn 3D modeling and rendering, and I learned pretty quickly that most people use Maya, Cinema 4D, or Blender to do this. Now, I personally liked Cinema 4D since I knew it had integrations with After Effects, and at the time I was already pretty good at using Adobe software, but... So yeah, Blender it was. At the time, Blender 2.79 was the latest version. It was rough around the edges compared to today, but it got the job done and at least it was free, which was good enough for me. Since I was already pretty good with 2D art and design, I figured there was no need for me to learn the basics in 3D, which honestly was my first major mistake. Progress was super slow and even the most basic of tasks would take me hours. But stubborn as I was, I just put my head down and kept at it. I can just take my inspiration from a show I was watching and use that to create an artwork. Work. Yeah. So this took me literal weeks to do, and it's basically just a few cylinders, extruded cubes, and a plane or two. Now, is it a terrible artwork? No, I don't think so, but it's also not the best, and definitely not seeing how much time I put in. I usually pick up skills quite fast, so struggling this much to create something this simple, and finding out creating a 3D is nothing like 2D, honestly, discouraged me a lot. So much so that I gave up on Blender for the rest of year one, and went back to just playing video games instead. It's worth noting though that even the biggest artists out there started with some terrible, terrible artworks. No one is born an award-winning artist, it always takes tons of time and effort. So don't expect to be good from the get-go, but instead put in the work. Enter year two. In year two, my job increasingly sucked, and so I figured it would be a good idea to have a goal to work towards. I set my sights on working in the game industry. So I connected with some friends of friends who already worked at AAA Game Studios and even noticed some new openings at Guerrilla Games. But this new goal also created some anxiety as it created doubt for my weapon of choice, Blender. Everywhere I looked, including in many job listings, people said that Maya and 3ds Max were the industry standards and Blender was no more than the slightly dopey nephew of 3D softwares. Now, I obviously didn't want to set myself back with the wrong skill for the job, putting in all that time and effort. However, the 3D artists I spoke to all said the same thing. It's not the tool that matters, but the result. Plus, many of the same principles apply on a broader level than the tool itself. Learning Maya isn't crazy hard if you're great at Blender, just as learning digital art isn't that difficult if you already make physical art. So it's not time wasted in my opinion. And to be honest, it also kind of fit my view since Blender was still $2,500 cheaper than the so-called industry standards. Plus, with the 2.8 update, Blender looked and performed better than ever and also got increasingly popular with both pro and aspiring artists. Fact was though, that you'll have to learn the basics for the tool. And as you may remember, I still didn't really know any of these basics. And not only did I not know the Blender basics, I also needed to learn skills like UV unwrapping, texturing, proper topology, and so many other crucial skills. So just like in year one, I went at it and tried doing it all by myself. But this time around, I realized my mistake early on and took to the internet and my new 3D artist friends for help. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of having access to a group of people like that. It's so cool and such a great motivator to be able to learn from and with each other, which is why I would recommend each and every one of you to look for similar groups, even if it's just a general one like my own Discord channel. To further improve my skill, I also watched dozens of tutorials on anything game art related and took several courses like, for example, CG Boost as the 3D environments course. Now, had I known about Skillshare at the time, the sponsor of this video, I probably would have learned so much more too during this year. You can't always find good tutorials on subjects and buying courses can be really, really expensive. Yet, Skillshare offers hundreds of different courses on a wide range of topics, whether it's Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, UV unwrapping, or something entirely different yet relevant, like the course Design for the Job You Want, Personal Projects to Build Your Portfolio by Alison Kohler that teaches 
you how you can effectively use your time for personal projects that will help you land that dream job. Skillshare literally offers thousands of classes on dozens of relevant subjects that will all help you become better. And with their new and improved class system, including smarter class categories, new class topics, and the ability to find classes by software and material, finding the right class for you should be easier than ever. Don't make the same mistake I did four years ago. Invest in endless knowledge for just a couple of bucks a month by signing up to Skillshare now and use my link in the description to get a one month free trial. It's available for the first 500 people who sign up, so don't miss out. Now having spent all year learning the basics and getting better at Blender, I slowly started feeling comfortable with 3D and I was truly excited for the future. But that excitement didn't last long because in year three, I quit Blender. With the limited free time I had, I found spending it on learning Blender increasingly difficult. Working a job, socializing with family and friends, and trying to learn a new skill was a lot. I started spending less time on learning and more time on relaxing. Booting Blender became a chore instead of fun, and the idea of having to spend yet another evening and night learning about shortcuts and proper modeling techniques turned into a huge hurdle. This feeling lasted for months. After a while, I figured that what I needed was some external pressure. So I decided to join in on ArtStation's Feudal Japan Challenge and set my sights on their prop challenge, creating three high quality game assets based on concepts from the already completed concept art challenge. This really helped as I now had a goal to achieve, having told friends and family, and most important my group of peers that I'd be joining, really put on the pressure to put in the work and fired my passion. Every moment not spent working or sleeping, I now put into this challenge. Hundreds and hundreds hundreds of hours, often deep into the night over the course of months, and in the end I managed to complete two out of the three required props. I never stood a chance at winning, but having put in so much effort, I was proud of my accomplishment. Creating two, in my opinion, pretty cool and well-made assets that got some positive feedback from pro artists and taught me a lot of new stuff was a big high for this year. But after the challenge was over, I fell into a hole. The realization set in that it took me months of work to create two prop assets that in an actual studio would probably take about a day or four of work each, if not less. I also kind of burned out on the challenge since I put in so much effort without properly resting, relaxing, and taking care of myself. And so I lost any and all confidence that I gained in the last three years. And so I quit. I gave up. I felt like I began too late, was too old, and couldn't compete with people that had more time, more skills, and less obligations, all the while being 10 years younger than me. Looking back, I probably should have kept at it. I now believe that whatever you put energy into grows. Yet, I gave up so early on, giving into my anxiety, and never gave this thing enough of a chance to develop and grow. Now this all sounds pretty bad and I like the story should end here. but. Instead, it actually sparked the biggest change in my life ever, which leads me to year four. I think this is true, but in my case, I couldn't really move this group of people who had a better chance of getting the job that I wanted. Instead, I decided on not moving the obstruction, but the goal itself. Ever since I can remember, I've liked teaching and helping others. I did so as a kid, tutoring classmates in primary school. I helped friends with classes in high school and taught my college class in Illustrator. It's always been a common theme in my life, and after three years of learning Blender, I got to a point where I felt comfortable in showing others the ropes. I clearly remember Ducky3D's video, How I Make Tutorials for a Living on YouTube, as a huge eye-opener that making a living like this was possible. Pair that with COVID preventing anything besides sitting behind my PC, this turned out to be a decisive moment for me to start doing tutorials too. And so I moved the goal to making a living with 3D through online methods, once more spending most of my free time learning editing, making videos, all the while improving my Blender skills. Working from my attic, this led to my first few Blender tutorials. They didn't go viral, but they also didn't perform terrible, and as with all things, getting good at it takes a lot of dedication and tons of time. Again, if you put energy into something, it grows. Luckily, I thoroughly enjoyed this combination of doing Blender and teaching it to others. Plus, this time around, I wasn't planning on giving up like before, no matter the struggle in combining this with work and social life. So I made video after video, creating personal projects as the basis for these tutorials. And with each video, the quality and more importantly, 
recently, my skill as a teacher and Blender user grew. I learned so many new things like running a YouTube channel, presenting information, telling a story, and being an online presence. And with Blender constantly getting new updates, including a huge overhaul in version 3.0, there was no shortage of new stuff to learn, discover, and teach in videos. Eventually, I figured that even if this YouTube thing never went anywhere, I still got all these new skills that would look good on my resume, which honestly is a great reason for learning new things anyways. It shows dedication, the will to grow and learn, and the ability to change. Working from home due to COVID still, I spent this whole year making tutorials and by the end of the year, I enjoyed this so much, I decided to quit my job. Now, I think it's good to point out here that I wouldn't recommend anyone ever do this without some sort of safety net. In my case, my wife had a decent paying job and if necessary, we could rely on her income to survive while I went back to finding a normal job. Anyways, all of this really put the pressure on for year five. All in on Blender and no longer having a job, I spent every waking moment studying and creating. Testing with Blender's new feature geometry notes, learning new texturing methods, experimenting with new settings like caustics, and turning all of this newfound knowledge into tutorials and content. What was really cool is that with putting all of this effort into sharing my knowledge online, it also attracted companies and people who saw these skills and wanted to hire me for projects, have me test their product, or name their brand. And this was huge for me. It's also why I'd recommend anyone who wants to make a living through 3D to have an online presence and present your skills and your knowledge. Being there and sharing little bits of what makes you, you as an artist, attracts attention from people who either feel the same way, like what you're saying, or simply think you're making cool stuff. Now, the weird thing is, if you're good at something, this can lead to you doing less of it. The person leading a team of 3D artists, although one themselves at some point, probably does little to no art these days because they're now managing this team. This also happened to me. I spent so much time making videos, running the business, and doing all the things that come with it that by the end of year 5, I hadn't really used Blender for months. And that's bad because using Blender is what I enjoy. Not only that, learning is a lifelong process, especially with Blender developing so fast. We're already at Blender 4 Plus now, which is kind of crazy to me coming from 2.7, and this industry is constantly moving and changing. Just take AI for example, throwing new challenges at us. So improving, learning, and working with the tools is important. And I stopped doing that. So now we're at year six. I've been trying to reconnect more with Blender this year, but it often still feels like the train is in motion and I can't really get off anymore. I'm on board, heading for destination, who knows? Now, I'm not complaining, this train is amazing and I'm having a blast riding it, but seeing Blender from the window as I pass it once more isn't always fun. And that's what my biggest takeout from six years of Blender is. I started doing Blender initially as a creative outlet, with making a living being a means to keep doing Blender as much as possible. And going from start starting out making art like this, to improving with game assets like these, to finally having a successful career doing 3D tutorial content for over 200,000 of you has been amazing to be a part of. But at some point, turning a hobby into work can prevent you from actually doing the hobby in the free, careless way that you did before. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's good to realize this if you set out to turn your passion into a living. Now for me, the way forward is to get back into Blender as much as possible whilst embracing this new career that it gave me. How? I don't know yet, but I do know that I look forward to the years to come and share with all of you and Blender.